In this video, we're going to create a milling tool holder by Lindex Nikon. Uh, this here is a ER collet style holder. And you can download these from their website. So if you go to lindexnikon.com and go to their products page, and I'm on Cat 40 ER collet style chucks, and when you look at each of these products, if I click on one of them uh, over here at the uh, top right of the product description, there's three different tabs. And when you click on that, you can download a step or an XT Parasolid file. So you can download one of these and follow along if you would like. Uh, that's up to you. Uh, but basically, the principles that we're going to be going over in this video should apply to any solid model that you would have. So let's get started. So this is the way that the tool holder comes in. And, uh, you know, you can see here that they did not place this with any reference point, really, that, uh, you know, I guess is useful. So we need to reposition this model so that it is positioned in a place that it will come into the milling spindle when we load it into uh, the milling station. So for a uh, cat style with the taper here, we are going to go ahead and use the center point of the base of the taper here. So to reposition something, to get that as our zero point, uh, what I've uh, found to do as, as the easiest method is to come here to the shading and it's kind of hard to see but uh, we'll see in a moment here. When we come to the manipulation toolbar you have a move, move origin command and when I uh, activate that when you move your your mouse uh, somewhere near you know the center of these uh, circular features so at the base of the taper, you can see that this is the highlighted uh, circle that defines the base of the taper. I'm just going to go ahead and click here now. And now when I uh, go back to a shaded mode, you can see that uh, the, the base of the taper is now the center point, the zero, zero point in Esprit. And that's what we want because we want uh, the reference point at the spindle to be wherever this holder should be. So now that we have that position correctly, what we want to do is orient this correctly. So if I'm standing in front of the machine and I'm looking at it, my z-axis is the axis that's going to go up into the spindle. So this holder needs to be rotated about my y-axis here, uh, 90 degrees. And how do we know it's a positive or a negative 90 degrees? Well, if you place your thumb along the y-axis and you rotate your fingers to make a fist, uh, that's a positive rotation. So my thumb should be pointing positively with the y-axis and then I rotate my fingers and that's going to be a 90 degree. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, what I'm going to do is just right click and we can right click and say select all. And when I do that, it highlights everything on the screen. Then I'm going to right click again and say copy. And then we're going to say rotate. So from the drop down list, we'll pick rotate. We'll select move and then we'll put a positive 90. I'm going to uncheck using the origin because I want to use the Y axis. So I'm going to select that and you'll see that it rotates my model. And it is now positioned as though if I was standing in front of the machine, you know, this thing would be hanging down off of the spindle face uh, with the positive z-axis going up the taper into the spindle. So we have it positioned and we have it rotated and oriented correctly. So now we just need to define where we want our tool to appear when we define one in a spree. So in other words, we want the tool to appear here at the face of the collet, not, you know, anywhere over here. So how do we do that? Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit F4 on my keyboard. F4 is going to position my holder where I can see the z-axis going across the screen. And now I'm going to, on my manipulation toolbar, I'm going to use the modify work plane. But if you don't see modify work plane, you have an arrow here. 
and this arrow is a drop down. You can pick the modify work plane here at the top of the list. And when you do that, you'll see that your UVW axis gets much larger. This makes it easier to pick the vectors. I'm gonna go ahead and just click. You can see when I move my mouse, it highlights that Z axis. I'm gonna move on top of that. When it's highlighted, I'm gonna click. And when I do that now, no matter where my mouse is, you know, you can see if I rotate here, no matter where my mouse is, I'm just gonna be sliding along that um, Z axis. So I went to an F4 view because I could just kind of zoom in over here and find a point on the face of this model. And it could be down here, you see one, there's one over here. And you could see the little, it's kind of hard to see, but you could see that green highlight. Maybe if I go to a clear view, you can see that a little bit better. But when I move here, you know, you can see that green. If I digitize here, for example, because we're sliding along the Z axis, that UVW is still going to be at the center. So the reason that uh, using the Modify Work Plane is nice is because I know that this is exactly at 0, 0, X, Y, 0 here on the screen. So all we have done is change the Z position to the face of the collet nut, and then I'm going to go ahead and create a new work plane, and I'm going to call that TA underscore 1. And that stands for Tool Axis or tool adapter position underscore one. We only need one. Uh, now when I save this out as a holder file, it will automatically make an HA for me. So uh, what is an HA? It's a holder adapter position. So if I were to maybe position like a straight shank extension in this collet uh, and then put the tool on the end of that, um, you know, we can have that as well, but it's going to create that for me automatically. So now I'm ready to go ahead and just save this file. So to do that, we'll come to File, Save As, and we're going to change this to Holder File, and then just uh, type in the name or, you know, you can copy paste the name from the original CAD model and say Save. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is show how to use the machining cloud. So we can see I did one earlier, and in the preview window, this is a Windows thing, by the way. So under the View tab in Windows, you can turn on or turn off the preview pane. And what's nice about that is you, you actually see the preview. You can rotate the preview of your holder prior to um, you know, loading it or anything. But when you first save out, the GDML from Esprit TNG, you see that the default view is the top view. And this is, we want the view to be kind of something like this because, you know, when I go to a folder, I like to see, like if I go to large icons, you can see here that this one is in the uh, isometric view kind of, and this one is in a top view. So if all of them were in this view, it'd be really nice. I could kind of tell the holder that I'm looking for right away. Uh, especially if I'm not familiar with maybe Lindex Nikon products or some other brand and I want to kind of test different holders inside of a spree before I buy one. So you can do collision checking with GDMLs. You know, if you want to test something before you buy it, you can actually make the GDML, put it into your process and see if you're getting that reach or that, you know, that clearance from whatever, you know, fixturing or work holding that you might have. So how do I get the, the, uh, the view to look like this versus this. Well, I'm going to double click this. And if you have machining cloud, uh, you can do this in machining cloud. So here I'm just opening the file and then I'm just going to left click and rotate this file to whatever view I want it to be saved in. And then I'll come to view and you can say set preview. And then I'm just going to come to file, resave the file. And it looks like this. Uh, model from Lindex Nikon, uh, there's some model, maybe this little teeny ring here, some of these rings might be the issue. So what I'm going to do is some of these I don't need, which is nice. So if you have an assembled product inside of, um, you know, the, uh, so I, I really only need these two uh, solids. So I'm going to see, I'm going to get rid of all these because I really don't need them. It just complicates the model and makes the model a larger file size. So I'm just going to go ahead and now 
come in here and save. So really quick, uh, in this in this uh, little green circular, uh, we call it a node, um, you'll have all your solids listed. And here I'm just clicking on them and it highlights on the screen which one it is. So I, I identified which two I actually want and then just deleted all the other ones. I'm gonna say File, Save. And that's saved without the error message. So one of those other ones that I didn't need was uh, you know, causing a little hiccup there. So I'm gonna go ahead and just get rid of Machining Cloud. And now you can see that both of my uh, models are you know, saved in that view, which is nice. So when we have our program or our machine loaded and we wanna take a look at how a different holder might look, this here is a, if I zoom out, it's a Haas. It's a Haas VF8 and we've got some programming on it. Uh, basically, you can change the um, visibility, the transparency of different uh, aspects of the machine here. So if I went to full outside sheet metal, I can turn that completely off using the icon or scroll the transparency bar, or I can take this and very quickly, you know, get rid of the things that I want from the outside inward toward the part. So we start with the machine, we go into the table, you know, the spindle, and then we go to the all the way to the stock and then to the part. So really nice. You can just uh, turn on or off whatever you want. So basically, we're going to go in here, and um, if I want to, well, let's see here. Let's say this drill or uh, maybe not this face mill. I don't even know what collet size that is. So we'll just do this as a as a uh, kind of a, you know, just an example, we have a, a, a holder here. So if I expand this, this holder here, if I wanna edit that, I just double click it and then come to the folder. And then I'm going to uh, come to the actual uh, folder that I saved this out at. This is the Lindex Nikon, and it was an ER collet style. And you see my two uh, holders and you see the preview window, which makes it nice. You know, we can see that or you know you could turn that on here so inside of the esprit interface this is the icon that turns on or off the preview window or you can come here to the drop down and i could pick large icons or even extra large icons and see a preview of the holder as well so if i double click this top one you'll see that that automatically changes out that holder to a much longer holder and my tool also moves with it so that is um, all that you have to do to uh, create a new GDML for a milling holder. And uh, in this video, I think we need to probably adjust where that tool point is for this particular spindle. So I'm gonna submit that. But uh, that's all that you have to do. So if you have any uh, questions or suggestions for any type of tutorial, uh, please let us know and uh, hopefully this helps you create more accurate collision checking models so that you can send better NC code to the floor and reduce hidden costs by not having to edit uh, code once it hits the machine.